Hi guys, this is Raul from Simple Wi-Fi and Cell, and in this video I'm going to do a in-depth review of an installation we did for the University of Miami Health Clinics. Uh, this building is about 90,000 square feet, and we ended up using a Wilson Pro 70 Plus. Not just one, but actually three of them. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about what I like, what I didn't like, uh, how we ended up placing some of the antennas and what kind of cable we ran, and a little bit of why we did what we did. Okay, so let's talk about what this is. Basically, this is a cellular repeater grabbing signals from an outside antenna, typically called the donor antenna, and it's feeding it into an amplifier and then being fed out stronger signal throughout a network of cables that are uh, going out to antennas so it's strategically placed around the building. The idea is to grab signal, bring it in, boost it and then pass it along to antennas uh, in areas where most people congregate, people work, important like conference rooms, lobbies, things like that. The idea is to improve signal quality and reception, just overall signal for data and voice inside a building that previously did not have any signal. Okay, so let me get right to it. Chances are you probably started watching this video for some sort of proof to see that these cellular repeaters actually work. So I'm going to show you right now using a Wilson Pro signal meter. This is giving me signal readings inside this electrical room about 20 feet away from the nearest antenna. And remember, I've, line of sight is really important when you're talking about signal and signal strength and quality. I've got wood, concrete, uh, steel framing, everything in between me and that antenna, and the booster right now is off. So there's no amplification going on inside the building from the outside signals. And I am showing on the LTE band here a minus 80 signal. Okay, so now I'm going to plug the booster right in, give it a second, and now we're seeing improvements to minus 70. Sometimes it could jump to the mid 60s. Okay, low 60s. And that's actually pretty impressive considering how far we are from the closest antenna and that we're in an electrical room with all this metal around me. You got EMI, electromagnetic interference, other cabling and stuff. And I'm seeing consistently between minus 60 and minus 73 the second I turn this system on. Okay, so now to talk about the connections going on in here, I've got my donor cable. So this cable marked in yellow when I was routing, routing it through the ceilings and bringing it in here. It's always good to mark your cable so you know what's what and then you're not kind of uh, troubleshooting and spending more time on site than you need to. So this is my outside antenna. This is feeding out to the roof where I've got an omnidirectional antenna. In this scenario, I used an omnidirectional because I'm very close to uh, cell towers that are just right, right down the street. Uh, I got perfect line of sight to them. This is a two and a half story building about you know 30 feet up. So it's it's got plenty of, of signal. And, and in fact, I actually uh, wanted to reduce some signal coming in because the amplifier, if it receives too much signal, believe it or not, will actually power itself down. And I believe that limit is neg 45. So if it has a better signal than neg 45, the amplifier will actually shut down and not boost any signal, even though you need it inside. So I actually ran uh, quite a bit of cable to get in here. By the time I got here, it was within the right parameters to be able to boost it and keep it going. The reason why that happens is a big technical. Uh, further, more technical than the conversation we're having right now, and it has to do with laws regarding the FCC. Now, when I bring it in, uh, when I got in here, this bottom cable, uh, just to help the routing, I put a right angle N because I want to eliminate as many bends and kinks on the connector as possible. And uh, this is feeding up into the ceiling. Now, up here on, on this part of the, of the ceiling is where I've got my first split, where I'm running a two-way, feeding out to another two antennas. From there, I've got a tap and feeding another two antennas. So 
uh, I'll probably show a high level view of what's going on and uh, and how we're routing the antennas. I got some drone footage of the of, from the roof and I can draw some lines. You'll see how coverage is being spread out from this one one amplifier. Now remember, this building is fairly large, so I actually ended up using three of these and splitting the building up into three zones. And that's just due to the ratio of indoor antennas to the amplifiers. So now, next step, let's go just take a look at one antenna and I can tell you why I positioned it where I did and how much signal we're getting out of there. Okay, so here we are at one of the locations for the indoor omnidirectional antenna. These antennas are fairly low on a DBI scale. Typically, we talk about things in the 24 DBI, 26 DBI, like the ultra wideband grid, uh, 12 DBI, 8 DBI Yagi's, that sort of thing. But omnidirectionals are typically much lower DBI because they're omnidirectional. There's less direction, directionality, so the signal is more of a globe, right? So it's being shared in 360 in a kind of a big oblong uh, shape as opposed to one focused beam like we do with the directional antennas. These are great for mounting up high and having the signal kind of shine down on people who need it. So right here, we're in a lobby about 20 feet away from the amplifier. Uh, this this is just a first drop and I have another one down that way and just on the other side is an office space where I've got two feeding off of the same feed. So antennas like this mounted up high, omnidirectional ceiling antennas are great for being able to distribute signal to multiple users in a nearby area. However, line of sight is very important. So the footprint on these antennas can vary greatly depending on where they are on that line. Uh, so think of it like a water hose, the more you tap it, the less will be coming out the other end. This footprint can feed about 1,200 to 1,500 square feet in all direction uh, before I need to put another one. So that you want to have signals kind of overlapping. So if you have two cellular zones, you want the signal overlapping. Obstructions like steel doors, security doors, concrete, all this is going to hinder that signal from spreading out. I've done installations where we put one of these in a warehouse and it was 25 feet up. We were able to get more coverage out of that antenna as opposed to in here, even though it was very similar, similar signal strengths and that's due to the walls and all the obstructions. So keep that in mind when you're placing these antennas, you want to uh, always have the best line of sight to the most users who need it. Okay, so now to talk about cable. All of these kits come with a half inch cable, uh, typically called L400. And this is a half inch coax insulated with a thick black jacket. And the idea here is that you're gonna use much thicker cable that's typically 50 ohms. And this is to improve signal attenuation. That's attenuation is a loss of signal uh, across a cable length. So we want to reduce attenuation and keep as much signal as possible reaching every antenna. So we're using fairly expensive uh, half inch thick rigid cable that you do not want to ever kink. So the, the cables have a registered bend radius, typically about that. And you don't wanna go beyond that or else you're gonna to start to hurt the signal and you can damage the signal, so, or damage the cable. So for example, if I'm running this in the ceilings and it gets, gets caught and I do something like this, this cable is now worthless. And I have to, I can cut it here and keep using it. But when you're running a 50 feet, 75 feet, 100 foot run, uh, you really wanna plan out your runs and be really careful about what's happening in the ceiling, any turns, any twists, any uh, friction you're getting on these cables because things like this, now this cable is dead to me and you're gonna have a big problem in trying to find where it is. Um, so yeah, half inch cable, try to get away from the thin stuff, uh, 240, 195, unless you're doing a real short jumper. And that's typically done by the amplifier. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to support you and all the equipment you buy from us. 
We're also doing these installations throughout the country. Uh, so if you have any questions, again, support at simplewifi.com or you can give us a call and speak to one of our USA based tech support agents. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.